Hi there Jeep owners. Today on your 2020 Jeep Wrangler, we're going to be taking a look at and showing you how to install Roadmaster's Smart Diode Wiring Kit for Incandescent Bulbs. There's five main components you'll need when flat towing your vehicle, the tow bar being one of those. In addition to your tow bar, you're also going to need your safety cables, which is a supplemental connection in addition to your tow bar. You'll also need your diode wiring, which takes the lighting from your motorhome and sends it to the lights at the back of your vehicle. Your base plate, which is the connection point on your vehicle for your tow bar and your safety cables to attach to. And lastly, your supplemental braking system, which will apply the brakes in your vehicle when you hit them in your motorhome. You can see that we've got the flashers on here on our motorhome and the exact same lights at the exact same time are coming on here at the back. This is the same for your turn signals, your brake signals, as well as your tail lights, keeping your DOT compliant in all states. What's nice about diode wiring is that it installs behind our tail light assembly here and is integrated in, and the diodes act as a one-way check valve. So whenever a signal is coming from our motorhome, it can pass through the diode and illuminate our bulb, but can't backfeed into the rest of our wiring into our Jeep to cause any damage to any of its components. Roadmaster has regular diodes available, which is a multiple diode set for your tail and turn signals. But with the smart diode here, we minimize the footprint behind our tail light, which is becoming ever more and more important on newer vehicles because the space behind the tail light assembly keeps getting smaller. And with the smart diode, it uses a single diode to perform the same functions that multiple diodes used to. Now, if you don't want to splice into the wiring on your vehicle, there are a couple other options besides diode kits. You could also get a magnetic light kit which would have lights that you would just stick onto your roof. On our Jeep here, we don't have a metal roof, so it wouldn't work out so well on this one. We'd end up having to stick them here on the side of the body. But with those, you have wires that you have to run down the side or on the roof of the car. You have to set those up every single time you want a flat tow. With this, it's just ready. You just plug your connector in and you're good to go. The most common connector for the front of your motorhome is gonna be a six-way connector. Now, one doesn't come included with the Smart Diode Wiring Kit, but we've got some available here at eTrailer.com. And you can see here where we've got it installed. The six pin connector is going to give you four spots inside for all of your necessary lighting, plus two additional spots for additional accessories. And this is often used for like a charge line kit to keep your battery charged up on your vehicle when you're going down the road. And we've got other accessories as well. You'll also need to make sure you get a cable so you can attach it to your motorhome. The most common connection on your motorhome is going to be a seven way. So you'll want to make sure that on the other end, you've got the appropriate adapter. And we've got seven to six cables here at eTrailer.com as well. Now that we've gone over some of the features of our wiring, why don't you follow along with me in the shop and we'll show you how to get it installed. We'll begin our installation here at the front of the vehicle. Our base plate has a mounting location for our connector here at the front. And that's where we're going to want to start. And we're going to route our wire from here to the back of the vehicle where we need to tap into the tail light assemblies. So from here, I just went right through the bracket and then I go through the opening in our panel here next to our base plate. From there, that actually routes just underneath the frame, you can kind of just reach. What I actually did was went underneath and I just fed it up from under the bumper. Here you can see behind the taillight through the wheel well. And this one, I just pulled this aside and that's how I fed it up in there. You can, it's pretty flimsy plastic. So you can just pull this aside and push your wiring up. And we're gonna grab our wiring then up top and we're going to continue feeding it back. We do go down our fender liner there towards our frame zip tying it to any factory wiring along the way. And once we hit the frame there at the back of the front wheel, we poke it into the frame and we actually stay inside the frame all the way towards the back of the vehicle. Here you can get a better look at the back of our wheel and our fender liner where we came down and we go into the frame in the large opening here and we just stay inside the frame all the way back. You're gonna have several holes in the frame. So what I did is I just kind of fed it over to one hole then fed it to the next, just going down. Here at the back of the vehicle, kind of where the frame just starts to go up, just above our rear suspension, we come out of the frame here on the inside in this opening hole. And we did that because we need to have a ground wire attachment to the bottom of our frame. And we're gonna hook that up right here. And the rest of the white wire that we've got here that goes off towards the rear of the vehicle, we actually cut and we kind of just peeled some of that off. And we're gonna be using the rest of that white wire as a jumper in a later step. So save the rest of that white wire. But while we're here, we can hook up our ground wire at this point. So we're just gonna strip this back. We'll then attach one of the ring terminals that come in your kit. And we're just gonna crimp this guy on there.
and then we'll use the included self-tapping screw to run it into our frame here. Now, due to clearances, it's probably gonna be the easiest if you're running in through this direction, just cause it's gonna be hard to get a gun or anything in there. And we don't wanna go into the floor. We can see here that this little channel has an opening on the inside, so that way we're not going to penetrate in the vehicle, allowing any moisture or exhaust fumes to enter. So we'll put it right here. We'll use our eight millimeter socket and just run it right in. From here then we continue our wiring on back, zip tying it to factory wiring along the way because we want to avoid our exhaust and any moving components. Our factory wiring is already routed in a way that it's going to avoid these. And your zip ties, we can just trim off any excess that we've got along the way for those zip ties as we're zip tying it up. And once we get back here, we do need to branch our wiring off. The green wire is going to go towards the passenger side while the yellow and brown wires are gonna go off towards the driver's side. Now that we've got our wires routed here to the back, we need to get them up behind our tail head assembly so we can make our connection. So we're gonna to need to remove these assemblies now so we can get our wires fed up. On the inside, I recommend opening the glass and your swing open door. And there's gonna be a cover here on the inside that hides our hardware we need to take off to get the assembly out. This cover is located inside just behind the tail head assembly. We're gonna use a flat bladed screwdriver to just poke in there and pop this cover up. Inside, you're gonna have a plastic bolt with a 10 millimeter hex head. So we're gonna use our 10 millimeter socket to remove this bolt. And it doesn't really need to come all the way out of there. If you've got it loose like this to where it's flopping around, you can really just let it sit there you can get it out great, but it doesn't need to. We can then just take our assemblies and then just pull them out now. They'll just come right out of there. And we're gonna wanna disconnect the electrical connectors. Now, our customer here does have a four pole wiring harness for his hitch installed on here. So that's what you're seeing here is this extra connector. Normally on your tail head assemblies, you're not gonna have this extra one here unless you've also installed a wiring harness. But if you don't have the wiring harness, yours is gonna look more like this, which is this connector here, and this is what's gonna be plugged directly into the assembly. It just won't have this in line. We'll take out the other side in the exact same way. Now, what we need to do is we need to tap into the stop turn circuit, and we're gonna be doing that on the tail light side. Normally, we would do this on the vehicle side, so that way this can easily be disconnected. But since our customer has a four pole flat, that extra harness that's installed in line, we're gonna be putting it on this side so that way whenever our motorhome sends its signals back, it's only gonna be sending them to our light and not to our four pole, our modulite four pole harness and also sending it to those things. So that's just extra battery that we're gonna be draining if it's sending it over there. And we don't wanna drain our battery when we're running down the road. The wire that we're gonna concern ourselves with is going to be the pin one wire. So on our tail light side, that's going to be this green wire here. If we hop over to our connector on our vehicle, if you wanted to put it on the vehicle side, that would be the pin one connector here, which is this yellow wire here. So you do the exact same thing that we're gonna do, but you would just be doing it with the yellow wire over here on the vehicle side, instead of the green wire here on the taillight side, if you don't have four pole flat modulite wiring. So we do need to trim back some of this uh, sheathing on here. So we're just going to carefully slice down that and peel this off. We've now got our green wire separated out. This is the one we're gonna be using. And I'm gonna go ahead and cut the wire right, right around there, because I'm gonna be mounting the diode just like this. So we wanna make sure that our wires can reach the appropriate connections that we need to make there. And the bulb is over here, and this is our connector. The bulb is what we're trying to illuminate, so that's always gonna be the car breakout is where it's going towards the bulb. If you're putting this on the other side of the connector using that yellow wire, the car breakout needs to go towards this plug here. So when you plug it in, it's going to be on the wire that's going this direction. But we're gonna have it cut right about here. It looks like this is gonna be able to easily get me to both of the connection points that I need for the diode there. And then we can just strip back this wire. 
And then we're going to take the spade terminals that are on our diode there. We're gonna crimp them onto our green wire here. We're gonna be using the car break out as well as the car break in. And they're all the same spade terminals. So you can pull off any one, but those are just the two specific circuits that are gonna be connected to these wires. So we'll just twist these guys and then crimp these spade terminals on. Now that we've got those connected, we can go ahead and stick our diode onto our assembly here. So I'm just gonna peel off the adhesive backing and we're gonna put it in this location here. We can then bring our green wire over and plug it in. Our connector side here is gonna to go to the in and then the out again always goes towards the bulb, which is this guy over here. Sometimes it's easier to just pull one of those off, get it out of your way. And then we can plug this in. So now we need to pull up the rest of our wiring. So we've got, this is the rest of that white wire that I'd cut off. I did leave it attached here just at the end, just to make it easier to get the wiring fed up inside behind our driver side tail light assembly here but most of it's peeled off because it does have to go over to the other side. And that's because we're using this as a jumper. Our brown wire is our tail light, and our yellow wire is our driver's side stop and turn signal. So we pulled these up, and there's a huge opening back here. To get these wires up, you can easily reach your arm down in there underneath just to poke those up. So we're gonna go ahead and strip all of these back now. And the white wire and the brown wire that we've got here those need to be twisted together so we can extend that brown wire signal through the white wire to the passenger side. So just twist those two. It is gonna be a tight fit inside of your spade terminals here. They do have a small opening, but just kinda push it on there. And I like to give it a little bit of a twist as I push to make sure that I'm getting those wires inside there. And then we can crimp this on here. And we're also going to crimp a spade terminal onto our yellow wire. And we have one more spade terminal that's on our smart diode and that is for our ground. And Roadmaster has provided a small little section of white wire. You're actually gonna have two of these because you're gonna have one for each side. And this is going to work as our ground wire. So we can go ahead and strip back both sides of this little ground here. One side of this is going to get the last spade terminal that's attached to our diodes. And the other side is going to get a ring terminal. So we can ground it to the chassis, similar to what we did underneath. Now you do have plenty of self-tapping screws that come included with your kit so you can run into the paneling here. But since our customer has that four pole flat harness installed, they've already got a, a ground wire attached there. So we're just gonna add ours right to that as well. So we're just gonna take that screw out, slide ours on and then reattach it. If you didn't have a ground here from adding wiring or anything like that, then you would just run this self-tapping screw right into the paneling. It'll automatically drill out its own hole and thread itself right in. So now that we've got that guy removed, we're just gonna take it, slide it on like that. And then we're just gonna reinstall this. Make sure they're nice and tight. It's nice and snug, it doesn't move. So now we can start connecting these to our new diode. And I found it a little bit easier if we plug in the assembly first. So we're gonna make sure we have it oriented the correct way. This is towards the outside, these are towards the inside. We can go ahead and plug our harness in here. and then we can start connecting our diodes. So the ground is the white wire and they're all labeled on the diode. So we're just gonna plug that in to where it says ground. Now we have RV brake, that's gonna be our yellow wire because that is our stop and turn circuit. So we just plug that guy into there. And lastly, RV tail, which is our brown wire with our little white wire jumper. 
and we'll just plug that into the last spot here. And at this point we can reinstall our tail light assembly and then we'll begin hooking up the passenger side. Just pokes right in there, everything fits nice and easy. Once you've got it pushed back in place, we can reinstall the screw. I did use a power tool when taking this one off. I do not recommend using a power tool when putting this back together as it is just a plastic bolt. I'm just gonna be tightening it down by hand here with this tool because I don't want to over tighten it. So here we are on our passenger side. Now I've gone ahead and made the exact same connections. It's still the green wire here on this side. Again, the only difference is gonna be if you are going here, if we follow it over to the factory harness, pin one is also gonna be a green wire. It's just a little different shade. It's more of like a lime green. So we've tapped it in just like we did over on the driver's side. The only difference on this side is that we've got the white wire, which was connected to our brown wire over on the driver's side, jumpering that tail light signal over. We just plugged it into where it says tail there. And the green wire from our harness that we routed over is our stop turn circuit, so it plugs into there. Otherwise, the rest of our connections here are gonna look exactly the same. Now that we've got all our connections completed at the back, we're gonna come here to the front so we can attach our six pole connector. You can get one here at eTrailer.com if you need one. Ours came included with our tow bar. So first thing I wanna do is get rid of the excess wiring that we've got here. And I do always like to leave a little bit of excess for future repairs or adding additional accessories, things like that, just to make things easier on yourself in the future. So we're gonna trim it off about here so we can easily pull that connector out if we wanna make any of those modifications. So we're just gonna trim off that excess there. Then we'll need to split each of these wires to separate them. And we could actually just cut right in between them. And once you've cut in between each one, you can actually just peel them back. And we don't need to peel it crazy far, just enough to where we can work with each wire individually. Once you've got each one peeled back, we're gonna strip each one of these so we can attach it to our connector. We'll then slide our dust boot on over our wiring. I could just usually just poke that through the other side of the bracket just so it stays out of our way. And we can start making our connections now. We've got four wires here. So we're gonna use four of the circuits here on the back. We're gonna start with the ground, which is labeled GD. We're gonna unscrew that one and we're just gonna work around unscrewing all the different connections we have here. So we have ground, which is our white wire. And then we have TM, which is our tail lights, and that's going to be our brown wire. And next we have S, which we're not going to use. Then we have RT, which is right turn. That's our green wire. And we have LT, which is left turn, and that's our yellow wire. And the center pin we won't be using as well. So you do have two extra spots there that, for additional accessories if you want in the future. Now we're just gonna start poking these wires in and tightening them down. We're just gonna follow that same order, starting with ground, which is white. We'll poke in the appropriate wire color, tighten it back down, and then move on to the next one. When you are tightening these down, make sure you've got your wire fully down in there, but also make sure that the screw is not tightening on the sheathing of the wire, it's tightening on the wires. Now that we've got all of our connections made, we're gonna apply a generous amount of dielectric grease to the back side of our connector here. This is gonna help keep out any moisture so we don't get any corrosion, ensuring a long lasting connection. Once you've got that all gooped up, we can go ahead and push it through our connector, through our bracket, and then we'll slide the dust boot over it. And what I like to do once I've got the dust boot slid on is to just seal it up in both the front and the back with some electrical tape. This will help keep your dust boot from sliding off and also help seal in that dielectric grease so you have a corrosion-free circuit. We can then secure it to our bracket with the hardware that came included with your base plate. Also included with your kit, you do get some conduit. I like to use some of that here at the front just to make it give it a nicer presence. When putting conduit on, it works easiest if you kind of just fold it backward. It'll kind of spread open and want to just lay on there when you do it this way. 
Sometimes it's easiest to if you scrunch it up. And that way you can poke it up into the areas you can't really get your hands into too easily. And this is just going to help give it a nicer look and also help protect it since it is exposed here at the front. We've now gone ahead and plugged in our tester so we can verify everything's working properly. You can plug into your motor home to also verify if it's working properly. You'll want to make sure that you have all of your proper lighting. So you make sure you have your left turn signal, right turn signal, tail lamps, and brake lamps. With everything working properly, we can just go back through our wiring, zip tie up any loose ends, and clean it up and we're ready to hook up and hit the road. And that completes our installation of Roadmaster's Smart Diode Wiring Kit for Incandescent Bulbs on our 2020 Jeep Wrangler.